Should you do a PhD? Like many simple questions, the answer is complicated. So in this video, we'll go through some of the things to consider, some of the pros and cons, and some questions to ask yourself before you make the decision. So doing a PhD can be a fantastic experience. So you get to take a deep dive into a subject you're interested in, you get to develop rare and valuable skills, you get to work with brilliant people, and when you make a discovery or figure out something new, it feels great. It can also open the door to a career in academia, which might then allow you to contribute something to the world through research and teaching. But, but, there are some caveats to this. Number one is that it doesn't suit everybody. Number two is that not all PhDs are equal. And I'm not just talking about the relative value on the job market of PhDs in different subjects here, but about the differences between PhD programs and the amount of support you'll get and the experience that you'll have with different supervisors. And number three is that doing a PhD doesn't necessarily make you more employable. And it can be very difficult to find academic jobs and difficult to transition out of academia too. But let's back up a little and think about how a PhD differs from everything else because it's important to know this before you start. So throughout most of the education system, there is a certain consistency in the way it's structured, where you typically have a standardized syllabus to follow that's been structured to help you learn. You'll have a clear timetable so you know exactly what to do and when, and you will take a standardized exam based on the syllabus so you have clear boundaries between what you need to know and what you don't. Now, depending on the PhD program, you may have some structured coursework and exams, but for the research part of a PhD, which is the most important, there is no syllabus, and you have to design your own project and decide what to do. There is no set timetable, you have to manage your own time and set your own priorities. And there is no standard exam. You will have to defend your work in front of an expert panel and you don't know what they might ask. But the really big fundamental difference is that in a PhD, you're trying to discover new knowledge rather than learning established concepts. So a PhD is not just different to everything you've done before. In many respects, it's the complete opposite. And this means that the skills that got you this far, the skills that helped you pass all those exams, which might help you get into a PhD program, are not the same skills you need to complete one. And many students who've done exceptionally well throughout all the previous levels of the education system struggle when it comes to a PhD. And when I say struggle, this can include some quite serious mental and physical health issues. So, if you want to do a PhD because you miss studying, or if you see it as a way of continuing learning or completing your education, it might be better to study something new at a lower level. So you could learn a new language, you could learn a new skill, or you could just read books on anything that takes your interest. You can get a world-class education for a dollar fifty in late fees at the public library. Or you can even take Ivy League university courses for free on YouTube. So if your goal is just to keep learning, you can do so easily without the cost and stress of a PhD. So who should do a PhD? Well, I would say you should consider it only if you genuinely love your subject and you love doing research. And this means enjoying problem solving. So as a PhD student, you'll be learning new skills and trying to do something that nobody has done before at the same time. So you will spend 99% of your time frustrated. So you will need to be at your best, your most curious and most engaged and most energized when things are going wrong and when you're not sure what to do. And if that appeals to you, then maybe a PhD will suit you. However, not all PhD programs are equal and who you work with will have a massive impact on your experience and the ultimate value of the PhD. Now, I'm not talking about the status 
of an individual institution or the reputation of an individual supervisor, but the level of support that you'll get and the amount that you'll be able to learn from others. If you get a good supervisor, you will learn a lot not only from them, but from other people in the research group too. They will help you develop your skills, help shape your project, and possibly also help prepare you for a research career. But this is not always the case. And there are PhD supervisors who contribute nothing, refusing to talk to their students until they produce a complete draft of a thesis. Or worse, some will actively undermine their students or delay their progress to keep them around as cheap labor. Once you're in that situation, it's very difficult to get out. So when you're applying for PhD programs, you need to think not just about whether you get accepted, but whether or not the program is acceptable to you. So I would ask a lot of questions about the kind of support you'll get, how often you'll meet your supervisor, and whether there's regular contact or collaboration between PhD students or um, other academics in the department. If they say that they will only meet with you every few months, or um, that they will only give feedback when you have a complete draft, or um, if they emphasize that it's all up to you, or if you get the impression that everybody works in isolation, or um, if you just don't get answers to any of your questions, I would maybe take these as a bad sign. But I would also ask, if you're speaking to a potential supervisor, what they love about their job. So if they seem enthusiastic and energized and seem to enjoy their work, that's probably a good sign. So let's say you love doing research and you've got a good impression from a potential supervisor, should you go ahead? Well, before you do, I think it's worth thinking about the potential costs and benefits. Now, it might be natural to assume that getting a PhD will automatically increase your prospects in the job market, but this isn't always the case. Now, if you want to stay in academia, then having a PhD is necessary, but it's not necessarily enough because there are more people graduating with PhDs than there are jobs available, and this makes it extremely competitive. So it's good to be informed early about the job market and the areas of research where jobs are available and the skills that are in demand, rather than waiting until you graduate to find this out. It's also good to look at where the jobs are and think about whether you would have to move to another country to find a job in your field. Now, that might be part of the appeal, and having a PhD might help you get a work visa somewhere and open up the world, but for others it might be a problem. For example, if your partner has a good, stable, non-academic job, are you going to ask them to move for a potentially insecure, temporary academic job? It's also worth looking at the value outside of academia of the skills you'll develop in your PhD. So even if you are dead set on becoming a career academic, it's a good idea to have a backup plan. So when I finished my PhD at the end of 2007, there was a lot of money flowing towards nanoscience and nanotechnology. There was even a joke that the word nano was Greek for funding. But in 2008, we had the global financial crash and funding was cut for everything. And whereas previously you could find plenty of three-year postdoc positions, suddenly it was almost impossible to find anything longer than 12 months. And that was in a field that was exceptionally well-funded compared to others. Now, I don't want any of this to put you off. If you want to be an academic, go for it but you should be aware of the job market and the demand for different skills. And you can get an idea of this by looking at academic and industry job postings, but it's also a good idea when you're making these big career decisions to talk to people who've done it. So if you are an undergraduate or master's student right now, talk to some of the academics in your department, ask them what it's like. Ask them how they made the decision and how they got to where they are now. And ask them about the good and bad aspects of the job and ask them for advice. And try to speak to a few different people and get different perspectives 
because it's a big decision. So a couple of other things to consider before we finish. Some people do a PhD not for any specific career reasons, but for the perceived validation and the status that comes with it. If this is the case, if you feel like you're somehow not enough if you don't have a PhD, unfortunately, getting one won't solve the problem. Now, don't get me wrong, it feels good to pass a PhD, but that feeling doesn't last that long. And it might only last a few days, but then you'll find that whatever insecurity drove you to do a PhD is still there, except now you don't have anything to aim for. Also, if you're doing it for validation, it can put you in a very vulnerable position, potentially unable to walk away if the PhD is a complete nightmare because your whole sense of self-esteem is tied up in it. So if you feel compelled to do a PhD for validation, it's probably cheaper and easier to find a good therapist or to train for a marathon or do something else that makes you feel good about yourself. So to wrap up, honestly, I think most people probably shouldn't do a PhD. It doesn't suit everybody and it is not an easy path. But if you really want to do it despite all of the risks and the caveats, because you just love your subject and you love getting stuck in and solving difficult problems, go for it. And while you should think carefully and ask questions before you commit, any big life decision will carry some risk. You will never have perfect information and you can never know how things will turn out, but you shouldn't let that stop you trying. So I think that's a good place to finish. But if you have any questions or if you are a current PhD student or academic and you have anything to add, please do leave a comment below. Just bear in mind that I can't answer questions about admissions or funding processes because they're different everywhere. So for those questions, it's better to speak to institutions directly. And finally, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, but more importantly, please share it with other people who you think would benefit. And if you want to know more about what I do or how to navigate a PhD and build your research and writing skills, head to my website at phd.academy. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.